Being the first, everyone after you is going to look to you to see what you did and how you did it. When I told people there's never been a Native American woman in Congress, they were like, you're kidding me, right? It was like, a dis it was like people were in disbelief about that. It's just a regular day where it's very packed per usual. <laughs> Deb Holland here, Congresswoman from District 1. I am heading down to the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives to manage our bill on protecting Chaco Canyon for future generations uh, for the entire world. There have been many times throughout my life where I've been the only Native woman in the room. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Deborah Holland. I'm from the Turquoise Clan and an enrolled member of Laguna Pueblo. I wish to acknowledge that we are on Indian land and I humbly ask to speak on this important bill. Mr. Chair, I'm right. I felt very strongly that we just deserve to have a voice. Of historic first, like the first two Native Americans to serve in Congress, Congresswoman Deb Holland and Sharice David, they had a moment. I needed to try for my grandparents who couldn't vote until 1948 because Native Americans in New Mexico couldn't vote in state elections until then, right? So it was just time for me to try to win. So this is, um, so there's my grandmother when she cleaned diesel train engines. I think a lot about her past and like her dreams for not just me, but all of her grandchildren. And that, this is, it's something, right? That her granddaughter's a congresswoman and able to make the decisions. Native Americans have gone through all of these eras of oppression and people making decisions for them. And so I have to work as hard as I can to make it better for people in the future. What is our footprint in not only this building, but this entire city? Native Americans helped to shape uh, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution because they had sophisticated governments. Um, I think there are some discrepancies in historical accounts of the relationship between the colonists and later our country's founders and the Native American tribes. Christopher Columbus, he murdered a lot of Indians, uh, but it seemingly shows him as the conqueror that everyone believes he is, uh, without any regard for all of those Native folks who died at his hands. Native Americans didn't become citizens of the United States until 1924. Jim Thorpe, the greatest athlete who ever lived, won gold medals for this country even before he was a citizen of this country. As, as Americans, we want to only learn about, you know, America in a positive light. What we'd like to do is just make sure that people know and understand the true history of our country. We're in a new era, right? We're in a new era now. It's almost like we're the most diverse Congress in the history of our country right now. The most, the most women, the most diversity, and uh, we need diversity in statues also, <laughs> quite frankly, right? The Chief Standing Bear statue, that's a, a very new statue. Chief Standing Bear being the Native American who brought a habeas corpus 
uh, case to the Supreme Court of the United States. They were holding him against his will. And he talked about, if I cut my hand and you cut your hand, we bleed the same. In the same regard, uh, Junipero Serra from California, one of the Franciscan missionary priests who, oh my gosh, essentially jailed thousands and thousands of Indians. So it's, it's a real juxtaposition. Ortiz White's GAO's high-risk designation focused on education, healthcare, and energy development, and what other issues need attention. The government has a responsibility to protect its citizens. I've made it a point to bring tribal leaders to the table so they can speak. To the shortfalls in federal funding and the negative impacts they perpetuate in tribal communities. There is no time like the present to make significant increased investments to support public safety, health care, education, housing, and economic Treaties never go, never expire. The U.S. government still has to keep those promises. It's when we don't have a voice, it's when we're not speaking out that the federal government gets things wrong. If I weren't here, if Sharice weren't here, who would be thinking about those things?